so I'll be the I'll be the host. All right, welcome in everybody. Today we have a special guest, Doug Menifee, who is going to walk us through how he rigs up his Hobie Outback. Uh, Doug has been a member of the Pack and Paddle and Hobie team for a number of years. How long have you been on the Hobie team, Doug? Uh, long enough to have a gray beard that my wife told me to shave today. <laughs> <laughs> so. Needless to say, Doug's had a world, a world of experience uh, in his Hobie Outback. He's been pedaling one for many years and has pretty much refined how he's got his system. So we thought it might be interesting for you to just take a look at the system that he has for uh, uh, landing fish, fishing in tournaments, and uh, everything else that he does in, Ho in his Hobie Outback. So we're going to switch positions. Doug's going to go up on the deck. I'm going to grab this phone. It's going to get jerky for just a second, and then we'll get go yep. ahead and uh, make this happen. All right. So, uh, Doug, what, what I'd like to do, I don't know how you want to make this happen, whether you want to go front to back or if you have a game plan in mind. But, yeah. Uh, when you're ready, you can just go ahead and go to it. Great. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, start off with the uh, front here. And uh, one of the things that a lot of guys uh, forget about is their, their net and a lot of guys out there and gals they they put their net in the back and i like to keep my net up in the front uh, for me it's easy access and you'll you'll notice i use the hobie rod holders uh, probably in a more unconventional fashion and i put them on the uh, side rails and uh, I'll show you how I use it for actually holding my rods in a little while, but uh, I also use it to uh, also steady my, my net. But when I get into rough waters, I'm also able to quickly be able to uh, uh, secure it into place and I'm able to quickly grab the, uh, the net and I use a couple of different nets. Uh, this is one that John carries, but uh, I'll also use a lightweight, really cheap net at times uh, as well. And I use the long handle nets so that I can reach out there and be able to scoop up those, uh, those fish. Uh, I try to use uh, nets that aren't gonna damage the fish and also that my hooks aren't going to get uh, hung up inside of. And then the, uh, a key thing also with the, uh, the nets resting on the, uh, the bow is it's quick and easy to set in, inside of uh, once I've uh, finished uh, working with the fish. And if I need to get something inside of my front hatch, I'm able to quickly be able to just rest it in the back onto the uh, onto the rails. Again, if I'm on, in rough water conditions, things change that are with it. But when I go into the front hatch to get things, I'm five foot five, so that makes things a little bit more difficult for me to reach around things inside of the kayak. But things that I carry inside of my uh, front hatch are. Uh, uh, a uh, Hobie uh, jacket, uh, waterproof jacket for when it starts to rain on me, uh, repellent, uh, specifically gnat repellent, some split rings uh, to be able to change out hooks, uh, more repellents inside of it, towels, line to be able to change out line. My brother hates it because I use old line. <laughs> uh, an extra flag in case uh, my flag off the back of my kayak comes off when I'm in transport. And then I always carry uh, plastic gloves and I carry um, something to clean my glasses with as well inside of a plastic uh, bag as well. And some extra uh, dry towels uh, because of water conditions. I normally, we're inside of John's shop here, uh, but I also have a bow line always hooked up to the front of my boat as well. And I run that bow line from the front of the bow and just have the excess slack hanging out inside of the uh, front hatch as well. Okay. So, so Doug, let me ask, is it fair yep. to say, Doug, that the, the um, drop-in bucket in the front is for storing things that you don't necessarily need to get to 
every minute, but you want to make sure they're in, in your boat if you need them. Absolutely. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I'll carry food for the middle of the day uh, inside of it. Uh, long-term storage because you forget about what's inside of the uh, uh, drop-in hatch. Uh, for me, uh, it's, it's things that you'll just go into once during the day. It's not going into all the time because you're reaching over your uh, wheel, over your uh, mirage drive to get into it. For me, it's also having to go over your net <laughs> and reposition your net to get into it as well. Okay. So Great. other guys that they don't have anything in their way, they may feel a little bit different about that. Okay. So, awesome. Uh, I, I also typically keep in front of my hatch my, uh, my plug. And a lot of guys, they just discard their plug and they just leave it at their house and they don't keep it with them. Well, uh, down in Louisiana, we do a lot of sight fishing out in the marsh, and we go into really skinny, skinny water where it's, it's a lot of uh, mud. And when I talk about skinny water, I'm talking about uh, three inches or less. Mm. And the good thing about taking the plug is you pull your drive out, which easy, pop your plug in, and when you pull at your stakeout pull out and you're pushing through that mud, the mud isn't coming up into, up in through your mirage drive hole. Mm -hmm. And it makes it a lot easier to be able to push through. And uh, what's, what's great about that is when, when you're, uh, you're able to push over the top of the mud with it, and it, it makes it really nice. And uh, that, that plug is really keeping you uh, buoyant on top of that, that mud and you're just gliding on top of it. it. Without it, you're bogging down inside of the mud at times. Got it. Are there, yeah. Not to set you up for this, Doug, but are there any other things that you, you recommend having on the boat for sight fishing? Uh, for sight fishing? You definitely want to have uh, a stakeout pole with some type of uh, foot on it. Mm -hmm. You can use your paddle mm -hmm. to do it, but it makes it much more difficult uh, when, like when you're in the mud. Mm -hmm. So with the, with the stakeout pole, it makes it really nice to be able to really get a grip down inside of that mud or inside of the, uh, the edge of that grass and push down inside of it. Okay. Uh, the other thing that you want to have is you want to have a really good pair of glasses. Hobie makes really nice glasses that are, uh, have an amber tint to them. Mm -hmm. that, that makes it really nice to have a contrast uh, view that's inside of it. And then I carry uh, with me uh, two things. So, so you notice I used to keep them inside of my hatch and I found that I wasn't using them but I carry two belt uh, items. One is a rod holder and then the other is a clip that is made by uh, one of our kayak uh, club members, uh, Ryan Alama. Uh, he 3D prints these, and it's a paddle clip, and it works fantastic. So, paddle just clips inside of it, and uh, goes around your uh, belt. And while you're doing sight fishing, I can stick my rod inside of here, uh, and then I can also do the uh, paddle uh, as well. And then I can uh, do the. Uh, It'll also hold my uh, stakeout pole with the uh, with the um, with the uh, with the elastic uh, in place as well. Okay. So okay, so there's times where so you the deal is you're pulling along. You've yep. got that. You have your rod in that rod thing on your on your waist. Yep. The uh, the sight fishing belt is in front. You're you're pushing along. And if you're using your paddle or if you're using your stakeout pole to push, 
when you see a fish, instead of trying to put it down on the boat and making noise, you're able to clip it into that belt. Correct. Easily grab your rod and make a cast. So you're just setting yourself up to very easily be able to make that cast. That's correct. Okay, got uh, it. And, and so I think bass fishermen can also use this. We're using it for red fishing, but bass fishermen that are doing sight fishing as well, uh, I think it also use this, uh, this tactic as well when, during the spawning season. Great. So, uh, and the, uh, the, the great thing about both of these, a lot of guys aren't using the, uh, the rod holders uh, today. They're just setting their rods between, on their seat and between their things. Mm -hmm. Ryan actually has a pole that comes up out of the sailboat mast right here. He has a pole that comes out and it extends about a foot and a half up and then he sets his pole on that mm -hmm. and that gives him the easy accessibility to go gotcha. onto that. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I like to. I, I like don't think to. it's a secret because it's, uh, everybody can see it in his kayak. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so that, that's a uh, good thing to be able to do. And then the other thing that is uh, with the stakeout pole, I keep mine loose and what uh, he's, what I'm able to do is I keep a bungee with me where I can tie it to different spots in my kayak if I want to stake out with it. I really find that I don't stake out a lot with my uh, stake out pole. Uh, I use it more for push polling mm -hmm. because I'm able to stay in place with my mirage drive. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when I do stake out, I just stake out and I just go right here into the side of the bungee and I just stake out off the side of the boat. Gotcha. Because okay. I'm just staking out for a couple of minutes. Right. And just real so, quick, quick and easy way to quick, stake out without a ex lot of complication. Exactly. So, so I'm not the type of fisherman that goes to a spot and fishes for two hours in the same spot. That is not my style of fishing. Yeah, you're on the move. All in the in time. a kayak, I, I'm the type of guy that is, uh, I'm, I'm there for two minutes and I move on which <laughs> I hear you I'm the same way I'm the same way but I have seen people go the other way and you'd be successful both and ways but absolutely I, but uh but I, I I'm kind of with you I like to stay on the move exactly uh I keep a pair of uh of uh hemostats so that I can remove hooks uh accessible uh easily accessible I keep them hooked on to the uh, Hobie bungees uh I can move them from side to side uh, depending on if I uh, feel like they're going to be on one side. Uh, I trailer my boat, so all of this stuff rides in my kayak. Most of the time I remove my net, I leave my, uh, my stakeout pole uh, mm -hmm. with me. I usually, when I'm trailering it, I turn it around mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become a spear uh, in case I'm in an accident uh, at me. I remove my uh, mirage drive uh, and put it inside of my uh, my Volvo when I'm tra traveling. Mm -hmm. I uh, have my Lowrance unit uh, sitting right here. I have my uh, transducer cable running into and through my boat, but I do not run my battery. I do not store my battery inside of my hull. So I, I literally Every time I get out of the kayak, I remove my, uh, my unit and I remove my battery and I use the cup holder to hold my uh, Nokia battery and that's my, uh, that's yeah. my battery holder. Okay, so right that's, there. The, uh, that's that Nokia Yak Attack battery that, that's you, correct. that you like to use. Cool. Yep. Great. So I have two of them, I keep them in rotation and... Uh, Do you bring two on the boat? during the day or you just have them in rotation for like if you have a two-day tournament you got one for one day one for the next usually that's what i do it depends on if it's a, a long tournament day if it's going to be if i'm going past three o'clock in the day then yeah. i'll take two batteries with me okay uh most of the places i'm fishing i'm it, unless it's a bass tournament i'm typically uh I, i'm typically only using the the Lawrence unit f primarily for GPS navigation at this particular point in time. 
Got so it. bass tournaments, I'm using it for more water depth and water temperature Got type it. of uh, environments. Okay. So uh, I use my uh, handy dandy fish grips. So you show, can see. Show what you're hooking that to, Doug. Can so you, you um, that same thing up? with the Hobie bungee right here. So I mean, this is great that we have you know so many places and accessories to just hook and uh, clip things to. Uh, you can see mine. Uh, really light color on one side and dark color on another <laughs> side. So <laughs> I am definitely a creature of habit. Uh, you have a good piece of equipment, why get rid of it, right? Yep. And this is probably my uh, fifth or sixth one uh, that's been associated with it. My Boga Grip died a slow death, uh, it fell between my uh, Mirage Drive and got dragged down Highway 90 for a oh while. Oh my God, I have not heard, I've heard a lot of Boga Grip stories, that's the first time I've heard that one. Yeah, it was on a, uh, on a, uh, on a gear keeper, so anyway. Uh, then I uh, have my fish bag that I take if it's a kill tournament, I'll, I'll take it with ice inside of it. Uh, these AO coolers are fantastic. Uh, the, the new ones, or newish ones, I guess I should say, they've been out a while now, uh, with the canvas lining uh, or outer uh, lining are uh, a lot better, I find, than the uh, vinyl uh, outside lining on them. And they, uh, they hold up, at least in our conditions, uh, a lot better. So uh, if, we're not, if we're doing a CPR tournament, then we, uh, I don't take it. Uh, I drink all of my water and Gatorades and everything at a natural temperature. So uh, whatever the temperature is outside, I don't take ice with me. Uh, I guess I'm a masochist in that fashion. <laughs> uh, so I just uh, storm right here without ice. Uh, and uh, when, I'm, when I'm not taking my ice cooler or ice chest, or I store them under my seat uh, so that they're easy access and easy to get to. Uh, you just wanna make sure that you have a lot of them that go with you. And then uh, on CPR turn, actually anytime I go out, I have my uh, fish board with me, um, taking the uh, uh, catch aluminum board with me. I have it bungeed in. I'm so glad that I have it bungeed in because I have dropped it more than one time uh, into the water and I have my uh, tourney keeper uh, on it. I usually have it uh, tightened up so that I can slide it uh, in and then I'm able to reach it around. It reaches enough up. One thing that I do uh, and my brother, uh, my brother and I fish together a lot. Uh, you probably know him, Wayne Lobb. Uh, he's on the Hobie fishing team with us. When I do CPR, I take my first pictures of my fish with my board like this in the outback. So the fish is pointed down. That forces that fish's mouth to be closed. So it's a lot easier to do that. You may lose an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch at the most on a fish, on the length of the fish. So you take your fish like that, it's gonna prevent that fish from jumping, if the fish jumps, is jumping over the side. The second thing that I'll do is I'll take that net, sorry John, it's gonna be in your way there. So. I'll take that net and I'll put that net up on the side so it's like a hockey net. So if that fish jumps up, it's gonna have a tendency to jump up and into that net. And that's gonna help you prevent, or it's gonna help prevent losing your fish during a CPR tournament. Then once I have a, uh, a decent picture of that fish, then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take that board and I'm gonna move it and I'm gonna move it to the side rails. And then I'm going to take a picture of it flat and see if I can get some additional length out of that fish. 
So, but do you put your foot on the fish to get additional length? I did not put my foot on the fish. Okay. Just and I'm doing this as quickly as I possibly can because I want to make sure that I'm uh, putting that fish back into the water uh, in a revived state. And as soon as I take that, that pic photo, then I'm uh, putting that fish uh, into the water. And, uh, and it's, it's worked fantastic uh, for myself and for my brother. Great tip. That's the kind of stuff you learn after going, uh, working through tournaments for multiple years. Absolutely. Great, great tip. And it's, it's, I mean, uh, I won't go through my, my portfolio of wins that I've had, but it's, it's won uh, multiple tournaments for me. So. Good. So the downfall of these are that you will get caught with your net on it. You can take uh, tape and uh, just run tape around the edges of it, and it'll uh, prevent the, uh, it, the net from getting caught on the edges on it. So then once you're finished with your board, you just take it and you just slide it right back into the side over here. So I use uh, what I, so I, I believe in uh, kind of holding on to gear as long as you possibly can. Uh, this is a modified H crate. So this is one of the original H crates that came out and Steve Lassard uh, actually is the uh, creator of this. And what I did was I took the original size of it and I cut it down and it is what is now the H Crate Junior. So Hobie took the, uh, what Steve did and turned it into the H Crate Junior and it's the same size as an H Crate Junior. And uh, I mean, it's got cracks and uh, I've got it zip tied together, the bottom. I mean, uh, <laughs> people are mortified when they see this thing. Uh, the screws are all broken all over the place, but it, it gets its job done uh, for me and it survived many a battle. So uh, if you want the same thing, it's the, like I said, the Ace Crate Junior, it fits perfect inside of the Outback I, I took and added two rod holders on the back of it, so it holds six rods inside of it, and I just flip over the two bungees, and it holds it in place. If you're gonna travel with it, then I would recommend taking the bungees and flipping them over onto the uh, two front latches or using the, uh, the straps that come with it uh, inside of it. I have my uh, an extra set of pliers that have come in handy multiple times for me strapped onto it. I keep uh, typically anywhere from four to six bait boxes inside of it. I, for pre-fishing, I take a lot of baits with me and then when I am fishing for tournaments, I try to reduce the number of baits down to uh, a minute, uh, to uh, it, four boxes at the most, uh, top water and jig heads, and I have just like, just this box is just uh, hooks, uh, various uh, number of hooks that are inside of it, different styles that are easy to access uh, inside of it. So, and then I carry an extra, this, this rod holder has probably be, been with me for, uh, probably close to 15 years now since I got into kayak fishing, since I owned a, a Hobie Revolution. Uh, it's my favorite style rod holder that Hobie makes. They still do make it. You buy it in a, a kit of two. I lost the other one. And it's, for me, being again, being small stature, it's easy to reach back and grab the, uh, the rod out of it. There's no frills that are associated with it. And it is, uh, the, the other thing that I, I like about the rod holder itself is that the, uh, there's, there's no moving parts on it. So the rod, when it goes into it, it's, it's there. And it, it's, it's just gonna, the, the rod is solid inside of it. So the, uh, 
The other part that is that I keep on the kayak is I keep an emergency 360 light on it. I also use it as my 360 light because it's just as bright as any other 360 light that you're gonna get out there. And I can take this off and I can attach it to a rod hook and then turn it on and it acts as a 360 light on my uh, kayak, but I can keep it on me and if I'm in a dangerous situation, I can remove it off of my seat and attach it onto my life jacket and then have a uh, 360 light that I have on me, uh, on my personal self, on the uh, life jacket. I talked about my rod holders. I take and put, uh, put the rods when I'm, while I'm fishing, I'll pull them out of my uh, upright position and then I will use the rod holders here to uh, actually go through my rotations. Excuse my giant bait. I was looking for a big trout the last time I fished. So I was looking for a really big trout. <laughs> Obviously I didn't find it. So I, I will use these Hobie rod holders to uh, hold my rods. The other tip that I'll give is if you're in high winds, pull your rods out of the, uh, out of the perpendicular position here, I guess that's correct, uh, and put them into the horizontal position and you're not gonna have as much drag going against the wind. You have them now in a horizontal position and you have less uh, you don't have that wind blowing against those rods and you will get probably half a mile of speed uh, pickup uh, from it. Uh, one thing you might want to do is uh, cover, if you're in salt water condition and you're in that type of condition, uh, cover your rods, uh, your reels, so that the salt water splash isn't going uh, on, the, uh, on the reels if you're in salt water uh, waves and things like that with it. So. Uh, keep a plastic bag, you know, the grocery bags, take those and cover those and uh, bungee them and that'll help protect your reels inside of that saltwater splash. So uh, that's, uh, I think that's about it. I do use the uh, Hobie box, uh, the, uh, I do use the, uh, the uh, gear box and the center console. I have a second one so that I can swap out between salt water and fresh water uh, fishing. And uh, that's pretty common with the uh, guys that are down here in uh, South Louisiana because we're uh, fishing both type of uh, species. So. What about the kayak cushion? The kayak fishing. No, the cushion. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm 54 years old now, so uh, my back is given out on me, so definitely uh, uh, kayak cushion, uh, uh, great, uh, great product out there on the market today. It definitely has, uh, has helped a lot of us with uh, uh, back issues. I mean, the Hobie seats are fantastic, but uh, I keep saying the Hobie Pro Angler seat, I've fished out of Pro Angler for years, and that, that's the Cadillac of all seats, but this uh, kayak cushion uh, definitely uh, upped the game on uh, being able to be out on the water for uh, eight to 10 hours. Yeah, I hear you, Doug. When you get older, your backside starts to thin out. That it does. And you need that, to add some cushion some kind of way. That it does. Awesome. Well, that's this is an amazing setup, Doug. I love all the little uh, ways that you've learned over the years to um, maximize the space in the boat, how to maximize the convenience, how to come up with little systems like your measuring boards, which is notoriously a problem for people starting off in CPR tournaments and just all the other little tips and tricks he gave us. So uh, yeah, really absolutely. appreciate it. Anything else that we haven't covered that you can think of that you'd like to cover right now? No, I think that I think this is about it. I, I know this boat has the uh, Torquedo on it. I will be adding that at uh, some point here in the future. So it's, you know, 
uh, I fought it as long as I could fight it, and uh, I mean, it's inevitable that uh, they're, they're coming into the tournament space, and uh, you know, I mean, they're, uh, you can only, you can, uh, I, I still think resist. the Mirage is the drive is the ultimate drive, but, uh, you can't uh, resist progress. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the motor gets you there and then you use the Mirage drive to do your fishing cause yeah. it's dead silent. So yeah. you can't, you can't beat that. I, I think, I think, I think the next generation is the, uh, Torquedo and the, the live scope are the, the two biggest things that are going to be on the uh on the on the tournament uh front for everybody absolutely it, so all right doug well we really really appreciate your time absolutely thank, thank you so so much for coming over and uh showing us your your setup and uh we look forward to seeing you on the water absolutely and thanks all, thank all y'all for watching and we'll see you again soon thank you john